Why would anyone put a whole train on top of another train? However, this practice used to be very common in Europe, especially in Germany. And the primary reason why there is a train on top of another train are of course different gauges. In this case we have standard gauge goods wagons on top of a meter gauge train. And therefore we need special meter gauge carriers which can take standard gauge wagons. But that doesn't really answer why that practice started in the first place. Because if this is a standard practice, and obviously there is enough space along the route for standard gauge wagons to fit, in fact if you think about it, a standard gauge wagon on top of a narrow gauge carrier needs more space than just a regular standard gauge line. Why haven't they built that line standard gauge to begin with? When you think about narrow gauge railways, one thing that probably comes to mind are difficult mountain passages, narrow corridors, long windy tunnels, all that kind of things where narrow gauge railways are just excellent in handling. But for Germany, this wasn't really the case narrow gauge railways were built, at least not in 99% of cases. The reason lines were built as narrow gauge is simply because they were cheaper that way. The vehicles are much smaller and lighter, therefore don't have to be quite as durable, and the generally shorter vehicles combined with a narrow gauge allow for tight curves, which also cut down on the needed space. Not because the space wouldn't have been available, but because the space belonged to farmers, mostly, and therefore would have cost money. In fact, most German narrow gauge lines simply wouldn't have been viable to build in standard gauge because of the high costs. It was therefore a welcome tool in the late 19th century to bring the railway even to the most remote locations where traffic demand isn't really high. But that of course wasn't done because of good heartedness, but rather out of, well, practical reasons. As at that point, the German industrialization was in full swing and workforces as well as materials needed to get from one place to another. And there were also often strategic considerations, which for example lead in Austria to a 760mm being the predominant narrow gauge gauge. And with that expensive narrow gauge systems were created, or rather an expense number of pretty much isolated narrow gauge routes. Nonetheless, by far the most expensive narrow gauge system could be found in Saxony with over 500 kilometers of narrow gauge track. A true narrow gauge paradise. However, as much as I would love it to be, not everything is perfect about narrow gauge railways. One problem is that their capacity is often quite limited, which forced many lines to be rebuilt to standard gauge. And then there is the issue that they are just not compatible with standard gauge and as we are still at a time long before standardized containers, stuff had to be manually taken from one wagon and loaded onto another, which is very labor intensive and expensive. There's a reason why certain German states like Bavaria had much simplified requirements for standard gauge secondary railways which made them much cheaper than they otherwise would have been, as such fairly competitive to narrow gauge, and as such Bavaria never had many narrow gauge railways, at least not comparatively speaking to Saxony, Prussia or Württemberg. And ultimately after the First World War, narrow gauge railways really began to struggle. And one solution that was found to be fairly effective is, well, just that to put a standard gauge train on top of a narrow gauge train. Because of the reason these narrow gauge lines were built to begin with was a space available and goods wagons, they tended for the longest time of European railway history to be short. So even the tight curves were not an issue. And with that, regular narrow gauge goods wagon began to slowly but steadily disappear. And especially if we look after the Second World War, by now also trucks have very much matured and became a fierce competition for the narrow gauge railways, at least as long as there were proper roads to use. Carriers for standard gauge wagons was the only viable way to transport goods on a narrow gauge line. And was really the best one could do until the very end, 
of German narrow-gauge lines. At least in revenue earning good service, excluding industrial spurs. Because there's always narrow-gauge somewhere. Despite being a lot more practical than manually unloading stuff from one wagon just to put it on another, even the carrier system had its problems. It still was a fairly time-intensive process to put the wagons on there, and depending on what system you used, as besides carriers there were also trucks to put just underneath an axle, which have the beautiful German name Rollböcke, or singular Rollbock, literally the rolling trestle, even though Bock in German can also mean ram, so the associations can go wild, which are therefore much more flexible, as especially the carriers often led to the train length to increase dramatically by using them, compared to just couple the standard gauge wagons behind each other. And at the end of the day it was really just the question if a line should be rebuilt to standard gauge or if it should be replaced by a truck. Usually the later option one. And with that the vast expanses of narrow gauge lines, in most European countries really, disappeared. And where there's narrow gauge still left, then it's probably either a tourist railway or has actually challenging terrain. Like the beautiful Swiss meter gauge railways. And now if you really wanted to push the concept of a train on top of a train even further, you could easily go another step. But that is probably the most trainception I can reasonably offer you. Everything else would become a little bit silly. Oh, and I have a Discord server now. Whenever I was looking at my analytics, I noticed one thing. The number one website or app or anything that links to my videos is Discord. So I figured when so many of you are already there, then I probably should finally create a Discord server dedicated to this channel, these models and everything else that has to do with railways, cars or whatever moves. So if you'd like to join, I have the link in the description. It's open to everyone. However, channel members receive a special role to access a channel members only area. Make sure that your Discord account is linked with your YouTube account though, otherwise that won't work. And speaking of channel members, I have to once again thank them for making this channel and these videos possible. And they include, but are not limited to, Contrian, Dan Menden, Dave Heise, Kay Frankly, Lukas Ilskens, Megan1220, Manus Moba, Martin Zotan Wigikern, Michael Beck, SGT Scuba, Sören Dominic Cook, Steamy Player, and Void Elder. And if you want to know more about my remark regarding bad roads, or just about narrow gauge in Germany in general, then this video is for you.